Great, thanks. So, yeah, so today's topic is going to be around Coastal Edge. This is coming from uh, our program, which is a European program called Future Foods, as it says on the screen. This is an EU funded program through, through FO. It's a collaborative project for, with, between ourselves at BIC Innovation and Aberystwyth University. It uh, allows food and drink companies in Wales to access academic support, R&D support through that programme. If you want further details, I'll put the website there or I'll send my details out later on and people can get in contact about that. So let's move on to the, the programme itself. Um, please, over to you, Louise. Hi, morning everybody. Um, we're just going to run through a number of slides um, between myself and Natalie, which will hopefully just provide some insight and also spark some, some debate. Um, so just setting the scene to start with, I just wanted to put in context uh, the seaweed and microalgae production and the size of the market at the moment. So as you can see, it's, it's all about Asia. Um, the majority of what they produce is around um, seaweed and also oils related to seaweed. Um, and this is obviously a double-edged sword. So you know, we're tiny when it comes to Europe in terms of our participation in this market at the moment. But on the positive side, there's lots of opportunities to look at adding value and creating, developing a sector in Wales that would um, provide new commercial opportunities, uh, jobs, etc. cetera. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why we're, we're, all, we're all here and talking about this, this industry because obviously a lot of people see that there's opportunities for, for the region. So looking a little bit onto the market, so where we are kind of within um, mainly the, kind of the food industry where people are working uh, to as well and what they're looking to purchase into, is that the algae market itself is looking at about 3.89 billion, so pretty huge in 2018, and it's looking to grow significantly to about 5.9 billion by 2006, um, and there's quite a few market reports that are kind of also all directing into the same, um, same channel. So it looks like it's pretty robust. The commercial seaweed market as well, at the minute is, is very kind of um, Asia driven, but again, it's looking at about 11.9 billion by 2027. So a combined market of just under 20 billion pounds, uh, sorry, $20 billion, which, which is huge. But this is really driven by major food trends. And these are kind of the globalized cuisine. So quite a lot of people are wanting to experience, especially within the West, experience Asian cuisine. This is particularly driven by Generation Z, um, you know, just people that are having more disposable income to try something a little bit new. Also, the search of alternative proteins seem to be one of the biggest things that are coming out of Europe at the moment, especially driven from obviously the increasing population and how we're going to meet those demands. With, with the, the sea vegetables, that seems to be one of the, the biggest um, interactions, especially looking to see how we can extract bioactive compounds. Um, and that then is really kind of focusing onto the kind of functional foods and also then looking into um, nutraceuticals as much as pharmaceuticals. Um, and we're looking as well at kind of sustainable foods. I know sustainable is, a, is a very much a kind of a different um, concept depending on which angle that you're looking at it. But here particularly, it's focused on the land use. So for, for, for instance, to produce protein, there's a lot less land and use um, compared to either livestock or compared to terrestrial plants. So within the UK, the main thing I've just kind of touched on is the quality of protein that we're looking um, at and why algae in particular has been so um, fundamental in, in this type of research. If we're looking at the, the population of growing to kind of potentially 9 billion over the next few years, then we need this um, protein supply. And when you're looking at microalgae in particular, it's about 70% protein. And the land yield is roughly 2.5 square meters. You can get one kilo of protein. And if we compare that to, for instance, chickens, which is about 46 square meters to get one kilo, and beef is about 144 um, square meters to get one kilo of protein. So actually, it's really, really significant. 
also we're looking at kind of how different areas so for instance on here we've got the different protein powders and that's mainly where the UK and the European markets are driven at the moment um, either as a powder itself or as an additive to, to add biological functions or nutritional values to, to these foods but also it's a really great um, alternative to soy soy beginning to get um, a little bit of a poorer reputation as a plant-based protein just due to large um, large scale um, imports and deforestation it's also got a complete amino acid profile which is particularly um, interesting and exciting when it comes to plant proteins as in the past or, or even currently a lot of them have to be combined so for example a lot of plant proteins are using um, say soy they also then use um, sunflower pea um, and rice just in order to kind of complement each other's amino acid profile where actually you could just use um, say spirulina or corella and that would have a complete amino acid profile so that's really really exciting it could also be used for a lot of fortification so again instead of kind of using a chemical fortification it's just a naturally fortified product it does vary depending on where you get the species from, the seasonality and the, the ecosystem of where you're harvesting those um, particular seaweeds or algae from. Um, so I think there's actually a really interesting research project there in itself um, and it could then very much beneficial uh, to the nutraceutical and the functional food markets. Just to name a few, we've got different fats, so it's very high in your omega-3 fatty acids, uh, particularly DHA, which is one of those large scale deficiencies that the UK and the Western world are facing at the moment so again i'm not saying that it's going to suddenly eradicate everything but it's a really great um, food source that could be used in order to to reduce deficiency or enhance sufficiency high in polysaccharides high in magnesium phosphorus iodine iron calcium um, there's nothing really that it doesn't do within reason um, and it's actually much higher than, than, than again land, uh, land plants but it's just the extraction techniques which are really the tricky part here making sure that those compounds can be extracted or maintained once dried and in order then for, for people to, um, to make full advantage of those uh, those bioactive compounds also again just to kind of um point out on here is quite a lot of these um, examples just on the side are either seasonings or flavorings the UK market again is just a little bit kind of skeptical or not skeptical but a little bit hesitant of actually eating seaweed itself but we seem to be very receptive of having a powder or a, a dressing or something that we can shake over a salad or over over our cooking over our meats for example so it's a really great way of putting in high nutrient value um, and also a really great way of getting people just to try something new um, and what it can do is add kind of a salty flavor but without adding high amounts of sodium so it could be a really great um, alternative or idea for people that perhaps have to follow a high, a high uh, sorry, a low sodium diet people who may be suffering from hypertension so there's quite a lot of uses and they, they still get those flavors so food doesn't need to be boring and this could be a great route into making those foods a little bit more exciting the bioactives as well have got seven main functions when you're looking at algae um, antibacterial antifungal antioxidant anti-tumor antiviral and again that, that's quite a large statement and there are quite a lot of different factor, factors that need to be put in into place but looking at various different research, uh, research studies they are connected to, to these various different um, different properties there are some studies as well that we'll share at the end um, if you want to look into them a little bit deeper so the main things that we've um, that, that we kind of see on the shelves are spirulina and corella. That's generally because they were the first two that were kind of approved for European markets, um, and also they're they're highly nutritious. So they've been very very well received. Um, originally they were kind of in the powder form that you'd add with water, and it was always a bit of a chore to drink. And I don't know how many people keep that in their cupboards now. <laughs> it's kind of not been used ever since. But there's so many novel ways that it could be added too. So we can put it into chocolate, for example. We can put it into bars, nutritious bars, um, and also adding it into um, um, kind of different alternatives to, um, to um, salt, to shakers, uh, to different pastas, for example. And actually, the research behind it is really robust. So very high uh, fibre content. That can be a plus and a minus because the fibre content does also kind of inhibit the uptake of those nutrients. But equally, as a very deficient country in fibre, it, it's always going to be beneficial. Um, broad spectrum of vitamins and minerals that are hosted there but really the interesting studies and the, the ones that are clinical and coming coming across are that it'll help lower your LDL cholesterol so your bad cholesterol also it will um, aid the uptake of other nutrients it's kind of a nutrient enhancer but it is all dependent on kind of the culture that those foods are so foods are 
um, grown within. So you can actually manipulate by putting more, more minerals into the water, for example, and then the algae can uptake that a little bit better. And one of the most exciting or the most relevant, especially from, uh, from my, my kind of point of view, would be the DHA. So again, one of those um, nutrients that we're generally quite deficient in. It doesn't always taste particularly well. We, we just don't eat much kind of fish, which we usually get it from. Um, but when you're looking into spirulina particularly, 9.1% of the total fatty acids are from DHA, and that's absolutely integral for neurological development for children and for old age and cognitive function so I think particularly relevant especially in, in, in this world today. So the key trends to so just looking at those what we find with with algae they really fit everything so, so it does fit particularly well it's got to be functional you've obviously it's going to be high protein but it's a plant-based and a vegan version of protein not to say that you can't have it with with a meat accompaniment it's very very versatile. Environmentally it's sustainable natural goodness again i don't think that there's many uh, many foods out there that can boast to what you can kind of get into algae in such a small amount of of, um, of product and what we could look at is trying to get the convenience so that's kind of where where perhaps algae at the minute is is got a little bit of a hurdle is having it in a convenient source so again i'll come on to a few examples in a moment but you might want to have them into say for example a crisps version or a drink something that people can get in but above all of that if it doesn't taste particularly good then people aren't going to come back and, and return purchase so those really are the, the drivers that people are looking at but taste still reigns is absolutely fundamental and all of these then have a knock-on effect of of kind of their subgroups so people are looking then at kind of mood enhancing um, alternative look um, authenticity the provenance of where it's from digestive health is really growing and again seaweeds um, play particularly well into that field so as a whole it fits very well into where where the, the consumer market is moving so I'm just going to hand over to Louise just to go through some some really very exciting research that was conducted earlier this year. Thanks, Natalie. I mean, I think it's fair to say the nutritional added value opportunities within this sector are pretty huge, um, which is really exciting for the Future Foods Programme for Nutri Wales. And the back end of last year, we actually commissioned Ipsos Mori to carry out some consumer research, and we surveyed just over a thousand consumers. Twenty five percent of those were from Wales specifically, so we had a good split of um, UK wide and Welsh specific views from consumers. Uh, and we tested a raft of different product ideas and three of them were actually related to algae and seaweed. Um, and as you can see on the screen here, the, the three key products were a seaweed grinder, so a, a really simple dried seaweed alternative to salt. Um, we talked about the seaweed being harvested um, in the UK rather than in Asia and therefore the environmental um, benefits of that and the reduced supply chain. We looked at algae burgers which is something we actually tried when we were out in the Netherlands last year which um, everybody was quite skeptical about until we sat down and ate them and they were amazing so um, yeah, I think there was quite a few converted people to um, algae alternatives to, to the normal diet. And again, we talked about um, growing, growing algae for these products, but by utilizing carbon dioxide and therefore looking at sustainable circular economy options. And then finally, we also looked at spirulina flour. So a product that um, is ideal to replace eggs, for example, um, high in protein. And again, we talked about the sustainable benefits of that. So, what I've got here over the next three slides is just showing what response we got from consumers because um, they were really positive. So out of actually all the products that we tested within the consumer research, the seaweed grinder was the most preferred product, the one where they thought there was the greatest opportunity. So in terms of just reading this slide at the bottom left hand side, you've got a little key that shows uh, the best product would have had a total green circle down to the worst product with a total red circle. And what we did was ask the consumers to look at the products based on relevance, uh, on whether the product was different and new and actually whether they believed it. So in terms of seaweed grinder, using 100 as a, an average index, it actually came out 166. The consumers liked it across all different variables. Um, they were very interested in the whole heart benefit and the convenience. They quite liked the lower carbon footprint 
the ones that are underlined are those specifically that the, the Welsh consumers identified with and related to. Um, and there was a, a little bit of scepticism about was it good for the environment, although they quite liked lower carbon footprint. So there's a, a little bit of conflict in thought. Um, but in Wales, the consumers particularly thought this was a great idea. And I think on the whole, um, the Welsh consumers were more receptive because obviously they're, they're used to having seaweed in their diet and different products. And then looking at algae burgers, again, it performed really well. Um, they obviously thought it was really different. So um, that was the higher part of the scoring. And again, they, they thought it was really relevant to have all the, the nutritional benefits. Um, I think one of the key things that Natalie's just talked about is, you know, taste is really important. And that was where there started to be a little bit of um, doubt about whether this is a product that they, they would actually like to try. Um, you know, algae doesn't sound great and does it really taste good? So, you know, I think anything like this is about educating the consumer, but also you know, getting product to try. And then finally, the spirulina flower. Um, Again, they thought it was good. They didn't see the relevance quite as much. And I think obviously I, this kind of product is going to be more skewed towards uh, vegan diets. So maybe as a whole, the thousand consumers weren't as engaged with that specifically. But overall, again, you know, the whole nutritional benefits were great. Um, they were a bit skeptical about how does this actually support the environment? Uh, and again, there's a, there's a big part to play in terms of anything that we develop in this in this sector from a sustainability point of view and making sure that we're educating the consumer. So just to conclude on this, um, algae as a word was quite off-putting. Um, people weren't particularly keen, you know, I think everybody took, thinks about green slimy straight away. Um, but actually, if we can educate and talk about the benefits, then the responses and the comments that were coming back were really positive about the nutritional benefits and utilising these types of products going forward. Thank you, Louise. I think that kind of puts it into perfect context of where the consumers are. Just to kind of highlight on a few things here. So these are other existing products that are commercially available. A lot of them do cross over. Um, so for example, Omega-3 is already um, very much a neurological enhancer. But again, when consumers are looking for products, these are the main searches that they're putting in. Um, and there seems to be a seaweed or an algae um, associated product for most of these things. And again, a lot of them are very much nutraceutical based rather than food based. And I think that's just where the, the UK market is coming from at the moment. We've been more um, exposed to powders or tablets or kind of capsules rather than foods but but the foods are becoming very very well accepted and that the benefits from these foods is, you know, can be huge so looking at different commercial opportunities um, and, and where we can kind of go from here um, products such as beta carotene was actually one of the first things that was extracted from um, spirulina and, and sold commercially and that that may be why spirulina has been so um, has been so successful to date but it's the purity of these extracted bioactive compounds um, that is key and also they they do add they're expensive to extract but also they they do add value to the product themselves um, and the functional compounds and it's kind of making sure that that those functional benefits are explained well to the consumer without going into kind of a, a too much of a scientific explanation as sometimes that could then make it sound like it's actually being chemically enhanced so it's it's the that challenge really of marketing to people um, but it really is those health factors that are the main driver at the moment especially in the current climate that we're living in at the minute people are looking for foods that are naturally fortified so areas that can kind of be looked at but also are being looked at at the moment a microalgae is a food additive and again that's already being used um, within some compounds so we've got various different ones of and say like carrageenan which has been used for, for many many years as, as a thickener and stabilizer we've then got microalgae to deliver bioactive um, compounds to stimulate the growth of different bacteria so again if you're looking at it more of a, a vegan or a reduced animal based product you can then start using these types of compounds in but it also works well onto milk products themselves um, you can use it to promote functionality and the, uh, the nutritional profile. So again, going back to, to the previous slides when we were looking at um, powders, there's a lot of protein powders, particularly vegan protein powders, that have now added in a, 
um, an algae element. So, so again, because it just naturally enhances the mineral and vitamin profile hugely and also the, the fatty acid profile without them having to manipulate anything. I mean, you know, too much. Salt alternatives, I think, is, is a huge potential opportunity, especially again with, uh, with the global epidemic of, um, of obesity and diabetes. Sustainable packaging is a really interesting one. Um, we'll come on to a, to a slide in a moment just to demonstrate a couple of those. Alternative animal feeds. So, again, looking at um, different kind of ruminant feeds, or it could be poultry feeds, there's been a lot of research into that. Um, and also, pigs, um, an interesting uh, study that was conducted, looked at actually reduce the E. coli within, within pigs um, and also the health their um any of their digestive problems and it was only a very small amount it was about five percent of their whole total feed and also by using algae and seaweed or the marine um, cultures can also help a circular economy tool um, you know, reducing waste and adding value so just to kind of highlight on here we've seen um, you know, sustainable farming use or, or trial foods to, in order to, to, to reduce the methane produced by cows and again this can really enhance then that particular market so it kind of takes away the um, the association that, that kind of uh, livestock farming is, is kind of a high um, greenhouse gas emissions. Also as a biostimulant, or as fertilizers for plants, um, ed edible or just kind of you know, ones that you might have in your garden. Nutrient enhancers, so again, as I've spoken about already, you can pop it into existing formulas um, to enhance your products. And again, most of it will go pretty pretty well to most products. Um, decrease oxidation, so again, it, it, it's an antioxidant itself. So by adding it, you can then prolong the shelf life. Bioactive compounds of probiotics. So again, probiotics and microbiome are a huge, huge topic at the moment and um, selling particularly well, especially their association with immunity. Stabilizers, as already mentioned, for example, carrageenan, alginates. You then got salt alternatives and packaging. So here's a really interesting, um, Just Eat have been working um, well together with Nopla and they've been putting together a um, kind of a sachet. Um, but as, as Louise was explaining to me yesterday, how it, it actually, it, it degrades quite quickly. So it's absolutely superb. The consumers apparently were loving it because it's very easy to open but it doesn't have a great long shelf life so that's kind of a plus and a minus you know um, so, so that's one area to really be explored and be looked into um, i'm just going to hand over to louise allrod just to explain a little bit um, about the sig i'll let louise do this bit <laughs> thank you um so this is really looking from a nutri wales clusters perspective um what we would like to do and we've we've started doing is develop a special interest group around all of the areas that are detailed in the left hand bottom box really um, so although we focused very much on um, seaweed and macro microalgae today there is a huge raft of interest and opportunity across all of these areas um, in particular aquaculture is really gaining momentum in terms of the number of people interested in developing this industry, people who are already working in it, researching areas. Um, and with the, the coastal format that we have in Wales and the abundance of you know, natural resources, there's a real opportunity to do um, some really exciting collaborative projects. And that's what we would like to help develop as part of the Nutri Wales cluster. Um, whether it be looking at research, ideally doing some study tours when we can actually get out and about and look at what's happening um, globally and understand um, you know, best practice and opportunities. Um, also doing the likes of what we've done with Ipsos Murray in terms of the consumer insight research and expanding that if we need to uh, and really delving into infrastructure feasibility studies and working with the Welsh Government, the Food Division, with the Fisheries Division and also some of the, the regional councils so that we can actually look at how we can put a lot of the discussions into action and take it forward as a, as a future industry for the region. Um, so if people want to get involved in the special interest group, you know, it'd be great for you to get in touch and we can start progressing in conversations, introducing people to each other and looking at how we can develop something quite exciting with all the opportunities that there are. Okay, so that, that concludes the, the slides. I'll hand over to Rod. If there's any questions coming through, we welcome those. Yeah, please guys, if, if you want, if you have any questions for the panel, um, fire away. I'll have a little read of that in, in a second. Um, 
really interesting. Thanks, guys. I could. I was getting the message. There's an awful lot of info in there. Um, you seem to be very positive. This area, uh, Natalie. I could. I could. Well, it's tell huge. Yes. I don't think there's many foods out there that will, or, or areas out there that really could um, enhance people's well-being. Genuinely, there's, there's many things out there that have associations but this does seem to tick many many boxes yeah and i, I had one uh, question that came in which was uh, actually are we talking about microalgae or macroalgae and seaweeds and i, I was saying that we're, we're talking about both here aren't we there's opportunities in, in, in both areas um, okay I'm, I'm probably going to start drawing this to a close now unless anyone's got any final questions before we uh, we conclude um i think is there some things we want to share before that finishes. Louise, you seem... Yeah, there's just, um, there's one uh, project that I wanted to raise, which I know some of um, the attendees will know about. Um, we are running an international cl collaboration project with Brittany. Um, so Brittany are, um, I think they have 90% of um, algae uh, farming, harvesting, etc. within France. Um, they've got a really developed uh, industry around both macro and microalgae. And we we were due to be going out to Brittany in March, but that kind of all came to an abrupt end. And what we are doing is moving that project um, into a virtual format. So we have a delegation of uh, Breton-based organisations, um, research organisations, as well as companies who are keen to collaborate with us. Um, and at the moment, we're pulling together delegates so that we can create some tangible projects uh, with them and look at funding opportunities and how we can bring those to fruition. So if anybody's interested in getting involved in that project as well, we'd love to hear from you um, and we can tell you a little bit more. So that's the Brittany collaborative project. That'd be fab. So we'll we, please get in touch on on that, and we can send out info. We're going to send out um, the the slide pack and go information to to people. And Natalie earlier on, you mentioned also we've got some of that research base that we've got on on the different groups and stuff. That we're happy to happy to share as well. Um, there's also been a lot of good info being shared amongst the group. Uh, as people say, we know there's a lot of it, there's a lot of info, sort of um, expertise across Wales actually already that it's about bringing that together and that if we can help in that manner that would be that'd be really good. Um, Joe, Joe saw about a working group developing a strategy. We'd love to do that and I think you know it, that that would be a great next part. I know there's work already gone in there sharing on that experience and building but i think having a unified voice would be really good well i hope i hope uh, everyone's been um found that useful i really enjoyed the discussion i appreciate the uh, comments and the engagement um i think next time we'll make it into more of a work, working group and a, we can open this up to more of a, a wider meeting so we'll, we'll look at doing that uh, very very soon uh, but in the meantime thanks very much uh, we'll be doing another webinar in um, uh, about a fortnight's time. That's that's more on alternative proteins. So I just sort of mention that different different topic. Um, but I hope you found it useful today and have a good rest of the day. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.